Hello everyone and welcome to Rotterdam Insight, the unofficial Eurovision talk show brought to you every night in this second Eurovision week by ESC Daily and OGAE. Tonight I have with me Maciej Mazanski from Dopro Erwetscher Po Dopro Vecher Europo Pola. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I'm still practicing, as you can see. And it was late last night, so I'm glad I got through that okay. Um, it was late last night, Maciej, because we were looking at the first semi final, of course. Um, how did you experience last night? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's really, really big, big pleasure. Uh, last night, yeah, it ended really, really late uh, at night. Uh, but I really enjoyed the show. It was really uh, well polished, well produced uh, show, uh, and I'm really happy about the qualifiers. What, what did you think was the biggest surprise in there? Because there's always in any Eurovision semi-final, there's always a surprise qualifier. Um, I think that. Um, Maybe the surprise qualifier was was Belgium or Israel, as their odds before the show uh, were not so high, uh, and and maybe that was a little bit unexpected. Not for me because I uh, I was um, lucky enough to, to to predict that the Israel will uh, make it through and and Belgium also. Wait a minute, Maciej, did you get ten out of ten last yes. night? Yes. Yes. Oh wow. <laughs> It wasn't really that difficult because you had to predict six uh, non-qualifiers, so it was not as many as we had in, in previous years, and uh, it's not happening often for me to, to get <laughs> the 10 out of 10. So, yeah, I was thinking between uh, Croatia and Israel. and uh, They were both very similar too, right? So that made it difficult to, uh, to, to make... You, you have six of these up-tempo female soloist and then they were some of were a bit similar it was difficult to predict which ones would get through yeah and it was obvious that not uh, every act like this will uh, go through uh, but when i looked at the jury rehearsal uh, i thought that uh, croatia um, israel had better vocals and better better charisma on stage i think than uh, albina from from croatia and that's why i decided okay let's go with with, with israel and that was a right let's call. go <laughs> all right so those were the qualifiers from uh, uh, last night. Of course, uh, there were also some countries that were no doubters, that were the easy to, uh, to predict qualifiers. But then the interesting thing for me is to look at the bookmakers, because how do they react to the performances of Malta, for example, or uh, uh, some other countries to go on the air for the first time for the whole world to see? And then for me, the interesting thing was, well, first of all, Malta, they sort of crawled back with the bookmakers. They've been falling down. Now they're crawling back. Yes, I think that we were a little bit disappointed after the, the first rehearsal uh, of Malta. So it was like more than a week ago or mm -hmm. even, even longer. So things changed and now it's introduced to the broad public. So the opinions are changing and I think people liked it. They, they liked uh, Malta and I think that they are back in this uh, top, um, uh, top, top countries that will be fighting for, for the victory. So there's a top three with the bookmakers now that Malta, as you say, is back in. There's also a surprise new number four, and that was Ukraine, also a country that performed last night. That was an interesting rise for me for to see Ukraine going all the way up the odds. What did you think about that? Exactly, because uh, many people at the beginning said that it may be even difficult for Ukraine to qualify. And now after seeing the rehearsal, uh, it was growing and growing and yesterday it exploded. Uh, there is a wonderful energy on stage. It's very well produced stage show. Uh, she's an amazing singer, amazing artist, and I think it's the whole package that gives you a success on Eurovision. And the song is very unusual, so some people will like it, some people will hate it. Uh, but I think this kind of that songs... That works with televoters generally, yeah. the love or hate thing. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, the songs that are like like this love or hate thing um, usually do, do, do good in, in Eurovision because they can stand out from more basic uh, acts. So for me, it's also interesting and I keep my fingers crossed as, as it's great mix of uh, tradition and, and something modern. Yeah, so um, those are a few takeaways from uh, last night's show, but of course the biggest takeaway is that Eurovision is back, right? So uh, this is something special because we've had a, a rough year. All of us had uh, had a rough year, but you in particular had quite a, a rough year yourself too. Um, 
can you explain to the people uh, what has happened to you? Because it's, I think it's a story that is very, um, it's, it's, it's very uh, serious topic now, nowadays, and it's relevant to more, to more than just yourself, I think. I, I agree with you. I, I wanted to share this this my, my story with uh, with people because I, I think that people may may benefit from it. Maybe I hope so. Um, because when you look at this uh, pandemic situation, coronavirus situation, I think that it a lot a lot of um, it depends on on your point of view and your experience. For example, if someone from your family or your friends goes. Uh, through COVID and and they have many uh, health troubles, then you start to think about it a little bit different than somebody who knows only people who who had COVID, but it was not really uh, tough, tough for, for Just them. to be clear, yeah. you had it and it yeah. was quite serious, right? Yes. So so I, I went to hospital because uh, of other health problems. It was very serious health problem. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, uh, and I, I was in, in the hospital for, for like uh, two two weeks uh, before they, they tested me and they said that I am uh, COVID-19 positive. Uh, so it's the hospital, it's the place where I, where I caught it. Um, so, uh, so then when I thought that my uh, initial health issues are, are now gone and it's everything okay, then I started to have uh, COVID symptoms. And it was getting worse and worse. Uh, I think uh, I, in my opinion, I'm quite young person, and <laughs> I don't have many many other uh, illness, diseases, and and, and so on. Uh, so I should go through COVID quite quite okay. But it was really tough time for me, really tough time. And uh, yeah, I, I was in hospital with uh, oxygen therapy, and and so on. So at at the worst moment of of my uh, COVID uh, yeah, situation was was where I wasn't even able to to get out of my bed because I was running out of breath. So right now I'm I'm talking to you and it's it looks just like we're uh, happy to see you back like this. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But you have to believe me that that two months ago I was in totally different place in, in my life and uh, health wise. So uh, I'm really uh, thankful that that I'm here and I, I recovered. But what I want to tell with with my mm -hmm. story is yes. that's it's it's COVID nineteen is very serious issue and you never know you might get it and uh, be well. It, it might be just some light, not so serious symptoms, but um, it also can go the other way and. Uh, it's really, really unpleasant there, experience. Yeah, there are of course these these statistics that show us that uh, you know the older you are, the yeah, more the yeah. more chance you have of having serious symptoms. But there's also the on the individual level, yeah. there's always the exception to the rule. And uh, in, exactly. in if that's you, it yeah. it can be very serious. So you you never know. So yeah. so it's really worth to 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 don't don't take any additional risk and and to take care of ourselves and uh, i've also seen how how the hospital is is um, um the, the situation in the hospital and it was really really tough very many 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 people uh, were there and and not so many doctors and, and nurses and so on uh, and i saw a lot of um, people suffering really and and then i thought yeah the, the the pandemic is real that's the thing because many people still have doubts that mm -hmm. it's really that big thing as media say or, or, or mm -hmm. politics say but it's not about politics it's about people and uh, really really horrible virus that is destroying our lives because of in the many lockdown in ways. many different ways yes that was what i i wanted to tell you because there are there are many ways you can be affected by it uh, in the in the business economics because of the lockdown but also health children wise. who can't go to school exactly it's mental health mental issues health, also yes. so yeah. it's uh, it's very tough time and i really really mm, mm, i really felt it uh, yeah well, as I said, we're happy that you are back. So let's make the positive switch now. Yes. <laughs> because we are here. We are in Rotterdam for Eurovision. You are here. Um, how special is that for you after all you've been through? 
it's so special. First of all, we've had this uh, uh, cancelled Eurovision last year, so we are all longing for Eurovision and we really miss that experience. I miss that experience. And then when this all, all, all bad things happened to me and I was in hospital and I thought that it's no Eurovision for me this year. Uh, but then I, I recovered and I'm, I'm so, so happy. So it, my, my happiness doubles because there was a break la last year and I also uh, was, was given up with, with, with hope that I will be able to come and I'm here. So it's a very, very special experience and I'm so happy to, to, to see you, to, to be in the press center, to, to watch the rehearsals. That's truly amazing. We can see the happiness even in your shirt. You're so happy to be in the Netherlands that you bought a shirt with bikes on it. We're very exactly. happy about exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. So um, let's talk about someone else who is also very happy that the Eurovision Song Contest is finally back and is in the Netherlands right now. That's Sietse Bakker, event supervisor. Tonight, Eurovision is back. Absolutely. I think it's uh, just about 730 days ago since the grand final in Tel Aviv that Duncan won. And finally tonight, the first semi-final of the Eurovision Song Contest 2021. It's exciting for the artists, for their fans, for the viewers all over Europe. And of course, it's exciting for, uh, for our team. We're finally here. We've had so many different challenges, uh, but we're ready to go for the first broadcast. All the artists, they will be on stage. How proud are you that you managed to pull that off? We're very proud, not just for the efforts that as a team we made to make that happen, but also for the artists who followed this protocol that we developed to make sure that we keep everyone healthy. And because of these combined efforts, tonight we will have all contestants on stage. And the next job we have is to make sure we also do that for the second semi-final and of course for that grand final on Saturday. back but there's still this uh, COVID scare at, uh, at times of course and we have to be uh, very careful as you just said if you're taking all these uh, precautions still there was one scary moment when we had a, uh, a case of uh, coronavirus within a delegation at Eurovision and it was your uh, delegation T can you tell us what exactly happened um, it's difficult to say what what exactly happened uh... We don't know. It's it's also the thing about uh, coronavirus that uh, when you are really um, careful and you try to to um, yeah to, to to make everything you can to to, to be safe, wear a mask uh, and so on, social distance and so on. There is also uh, some some chances that you, you you get COVID even though you are really careful mm -hmm. and you are doing a good job in in, in uh, being safe. Uh, so it's difficult to, to to say what what happened when I see how the Netherlands because um, there is a bubble, of course, that yeah. these allegations are in. Um, uh, somehow, uh, still a person in the Polish delegation uh, uh, got infected. Yeah. I think it was not someone on the stage, right? Do you know? No, who we it was? we know that uh, it was someone who is not on the stage. We don't know exactly what the person is, but it's not uh, Rafał and uh, none of the dancers or the backing singer. So it's more safe for the act to to happen on on Thursday. Uh, so I, I really appreciate how how the the EBU and and uh, the Netherlands, the Dutch television, how they prepared this year's Eurovision. Uh, um, to make sure it will be safe and it, to make sure it will happen, actually. So the, the, the whole health protocol, safety protocol, it's, I think it's really well prepared and it makes me feel safe uh, here. Uh, and I'm happy that people are, are really going with it, that they're not doing uh, many, many things against it. So, so that's, that's also very, very nice. And because of my experience, uh, it's easier for me to deal with the, all the difficulties that are coming with this uh, protocol and all the tests you have to do, wear a mask and so on and so on. It's for, for me, it's easier because I know what can happen if you get mm -hmm. infected. 
so yeah, I think that's that's a big mystery. What what happened? Why why there is a positive uh, COVID in in Polish delegation and in Icelandic delegation? Was that because uh, I heard uh, this? Uh, because the other delegations. So first of all, the Polish delegation and the Icelandic delegation are in the same hotel, right? Yeah. And there's two other delegations in that same hotel too, uh, who then got tested just as a precaution. There were no uh, other cases uh, found, but that tells me that they think uh, these two people may have then infected each other at the hotel. You never know. We we and I think we will never yeah. never know. Uh, but maybe yeah, this is this one one thing that um, connects this this two to two issues that uh, it was in the same hotel. So maybe the, the the hotel was something, someone in in the hotel. It's really such a difficult thing to 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 predict. It's so complex and we will we will never know but but it's good that it was uh, the other delegations from that hotel got tested i think that's a very uh, good good move it's the good thing about contact tracing that we have right now right yes. because we're it, it, the, the the whole reason that we even start to think about was it at the hotel was it here was because we have these tests was because we have all these methods now to to deal with it and and to be be cautious about it i think it was impossible to to avoid any uh, of COVID-19 uh, positive situation. So when you look at it, the Eurovision is going on for, for many, many weeks. Uh, the mm-hmm. preparations, the stage building and so on. And these are only two positive uh, cases. In six weeks with in s- tens of thousands of people. Exactly. So even in Formula One, which is very a, a big, uh, big thing with, with many, many people. And it's I think it's more complicated uh, in, in logistics than, than Eurovision. Um, and they they are also putting a lot of effort to make it safe. There there were some 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 cases with with COVID much more than than in in the Eurovision. So it says that it's impossible to get rid of it completely. Yeah, and so, maybe single cases aren't the issue, but you have to make sure that when these cases exist, exactly. it doesn't spread. Exactly. So that's I think that's the more important thing that you avoid uh, the spreading, ma- making the the. I don't know how it's in English it's called, but it is the source of the virus when it's spreading mm-hmm. uh, all, all, all around. So so it's good that uh, it's not happening and I hope that it will still be like this. We are waiting for, for the results uh, of the test of, of, of Polish delegation to, to make sure that they are uh, safe to, to attend the dress, uh, rehearsals and the, the show. Yeah, because today uh, the semi-final two cycle is going to start, basically. Yeah. And that means that uh, they they were in quarantine for the past couple of days and now they have to get back on the stage. But as far as I uh, have heard, all delegations, even Poland, even Iceland, are still good to go on stage. Mm-hmm. So we might have a Eurovision Song Contest with all uh, delegations on the stage except for Australia. Yeah, and that's uh, that's not call it too too, too early, but uh, it's a big, big success, I think. And if it really really will happen this way that this only be the two two cases and they didn't infect any other people in the Polish delegation, Icelandic or any other staying in the same hotel, then it's a big success of this health and safety protocol uh, that the the, the host broadcaster came with. Yeah host broadcaster and of course together with the EBU took a, made a lot of changes to this year's Eurovision Song Contest. They had to because of the situation. Let's talk to, uh, let's see what Martin Oesterdal had to say to us. He spoke to ESC Daily about these changes made to this year's Eurovision Song Contest. Well, here you can see, I mean, this is for us very luxurious to have this amount of space to be able to, to say, safely social distance between the um, between the, the booths and the green room uh, and these are really excellent looking comfortable sofas for everyone to sit in as well um, and yeah this is the best seat in the house also we uh, we have restricted delegation sizes which you may not see so much on the screen but um, yeah, there may might be some differences also on stage in terms of how many people are actually on stage because of of, uh, of the fact that we did allow backing vocals to be on the backing track this year. Is that a change that could possibly translate into a post-pandemic Eurovision as well? Well, uh, we don't know. We said it, we're going to try it this year because we realized early that we would probably have to restrict the, the delegation sizes. 
uh, and it seemed to you know like a good good option for the delegates to or for the delegations to know early in advance uh, to, to plan how they wanted to uh, put their delegations together. But we will evaluate this after after this year's contest, and then we'll see uh, what is the best way forward. So here we have the uh, contest team discussing the first days of rehearsals and uh, with the production team as well. Um, and yeah, so far so good. All the countries also had to make a, uh, a backup tape in case uh, their artist wouldn't be able to travel here or would catch coronavirus during, uh, during this, uh, this, these two weeks. How does the EBU ensure a level playing field between all countries? Well, we, we, uh, we put a lot of effort into that. Um, so in the production guidelines for the uh, live on tape backups, we, we also had what we call supervisory guidelines. Um, and we made sure that those were followed. You had a, uh, a limited time to, to, to record the, the live on tape. You had uh, a limited amount of takes that were allowed. And there were all sorts of other uh, uh, requirements and guidelines that we communicated. And we also made sure that we were present during the live on tape recordings to make sure that they were in fact live on tape recordings. Martin Oesterdal about all the changes that the EBU made to this year's Eurovision Song Contest in order to make it happen. Um, Marche, we've spoken a lot about coronavirus for now. Let's go back to the contest and to the uh, to the to the to the competition itself because the competition is somehow influenced by some of these corona measures as well and martin Ustadal just mentioned one he said this year we made the call early in the season to allow pre-recorded uh, backing vocals because it might um, uh, it might give the delegations a chance to size down the amount of people that have to to come here to rotterdam do you think that was a good call in this situation, uh, I'm sure that it was a, a good call because, as, as you said, it, it makes it a little bit easier to, to keep the delegation smaller. Uh, the question is, what will uh, be in the future when, when the pandemic is over? Oesterdal said, I can't rule it out. It may, it may be there to stay. Even in a post-pandemic world, we have to evaluate it after the contest. Do you think that would be a good idea? That's very difficult topic because on the one hand uh, the pre-recorded vocals makes many many songs just sound better and when we watch Eurovision we want it to sound good uh, it's it's very important especially for those uh, uh, artists who are not so strong when when it comes to their vocals uh, so it's it might support it a lot we, we see it in melody festival and in, in sweden um, and sometimes the, the swedish songs sounds better in melody festival than in eurovision because in eurovision they they need to use the real live uh, backing vocals uh this year the, the, this rule is gone uh i like it when the, the contest is as much live as it's possible so so i love the live backing vocals yes because you could also argue you say for some artists it's a good thing because if they're vocally not so strong it helps them you could argue that maybe those artists then shouldn't be in eurovision or are just simply not good enough <laughs> that's right I, I i agree with you uh, that's also the problem that many artists are are great artists but they are not as good as live performers uh so that th this might be helpful for for, for them uh, we've had this issue for example in in lisbon uh with uh, gromi and and lucas mayer yes because it was such a big hit radio hit in poland one of the biggest of the year if not the biggest one uh and and the song in studio version was was amazing and then in the live performance it wasn't that that good that that we expected from hearing the, the studio version so so sometimes it it might be helpful but i like it um you, you you say in, in EC Daily that you are covering Eurovision like Olympic Games of Music, right? Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, in the Olympics, you you see the the best people uh, in 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 this kind of uh, discipline, oh, yeah. yeah, yes, sport, and and in Eurovision, the people should be really good at singing, actually. So that's why if, if it was my decision, I would decide to to get rid of this pre-recorded. Uh, backing vocals and bring back the, the live uh, vocals. But yeah. what do you think EBU will do? That's the good good question. Uh, I think they will keep with it. It, it, it will stay. 
I think. It was a good moment to introduce it because uh, people talked about it for, for many years that, oh, maybe this year they will allow it like in the Melody Festival. But they didn't. And now it's it's perfect moment to introduce it because you have a good reason uh, for, for, for introducing it. And so, once it's there, it's very difficult to get exactly, rid of it. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it, it will stay. If it will be for the better, I don't know. Uh, we will see what, what the future will, will bring. Let's move on to the second semi-final now, because that's, of course, one of the reasons why you're here. I already mentioned it. We start the cycle today for the second semi-final. There's a first uh, dress rehearsal this afternoon, a very important jury show uh, in the night. What uh, For you, of course, that second semi-final is very important because Poland's in there, right? So it's probably the most important show for you to cover. Yes, exactly. And I'm really looking forward uh, for that. Uh, Poland is not doing well in, in bookmakers ranking or any fans ranking, ranking and, and, and so on. Uh, so uh, Do you f- understand why? Um, I think yes. Uh, the song is really nice. It's a it's, it's very pleasant song to, to listen to. I have fun when, when I hear it. Uh, but also it's very, um, how to say that, a little bit flat. Mm-hmm. It, it yes. lacks, lacks something. It's, it's on the same level from the beginning until the end. So I think that's, uh, that, that might be the reason. It's, um, I think people will, will um, feel that this song is familiar to them because it's very similar to, to the songs that we've heard before. It mm-hmm. might be a good thing because we like the things that we know. Mm-hmm. So um, and it's it's uh, in my opinion it's 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 catchy. It's it's easy to remember it after after hearing it because the the, the melody is is quite simple. Uh, I really like the the, the visuals. Uh, of the music video and of the staging here here in, in Eurovision I think I think it's done really really well uh, there are some some issues with with vocals of, of Rafa especially during this this uh, final part of the song when he's trying to elevate the song a little bit with more like vari- variations of, of, of his vocals to, to, to add something more and make the the, the Grande finale, mm-hmm. um, uh, but uh, he, he struggled a little bit with it during the rehearsals. But maybe he will do better during the the live show. Uh, we saw, uh, in my opinion, R- Romania they didn't qualify, but the the performance of Roxanne during the semi final night, in my opinion, was the best one yes, that we've better. seen yes. from yeah. all the rehearsals and especially the jury rehearsal, which was not not good. So we are hoping that that Rafa will will sing sing better during the, the life when he will feel the adrenaline and he will know that this is the moment to, to do, do do his best. So so I, Vo- I see I see the, 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 the troubles with, 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 with this one. Yeah, vocals are one of those troubles. Could it also be that uh, with this kind of, you know, hip and catchy song and also with this kind of staging, them trying to be uh, portray him as a very cool guy, do you think that's something that will come across as believable, especially to a wider European audience who doesn't know him like Polish people do. Yeah, so it's difficult uh, for me to, to tell because I know Rafał for, for a very long time. I know him as a, as a singer, but also as a TV host. So I have different pers- perspective than the viewers that will get to know him for the first time during semi-final. So it's, it's difficult to to tell, um, really. Uh, my, my, my biggest worry is that it will not stand out enough to make people vote for it. Because it's a really nice song. It's uh, a really nice performance. Uh, if the vocals will be okay, it will be also a very nice performance in, in, in case of, of, of vocals. Uh, but is it enough? To make it to the Eurovision final, I'm 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 worried. I, I keep my fingers crossed. Uh, I always support Poland, and and I support it very much this year, especially because uh, Rafał is getting a lot of hate in in in, in Poland. Uh, really unpleasant and, comments. And you don't feel hate. I don't feel hate. I just feel sorry. Sorry for all the people that are hating him so much. He doesn't deserve this. He's really dedicated, hardworking, and. Uh, uh, he's a very nice guy, um, and he he does his best to make this performance uh, as good as, as as he can. So, um, what's the biggest competition for him in this second semi final? When we look at the other participants, yeah, I think uh, that that the songs that are similar in the in the aesthetics or in the in the genre uh, 
uh, I think about uh, Denmark, for example, it's also this retro vibe. Mm-hmm. They have better spot. They are performing last, so that's think that this might be their uh, advantage. Uh, so, so yeah, the, the the main thing is to to stand out and and make people vote. I think our biggest hope is is televote because I think juries will 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 not vote for it. And in the previous years, we, we saw many many troubles with juries and, and Poland. Mm-hmm. Even when when the public appreciates something, uh, ju- juries are, are not that uh, not that positive. Um, so so yeah, I, I hope, hope hope for the best. I keep my fingers crossed, uh, even though the the odds are are not really uh, suggesting that it might happen. But I will believe uh, until the end that that maybe Europe will will start to dance and get on the right with. With yeah. So let's. You mentioned odds. Let's look at the odds because in this semi-final, I think the interesting part is uh, there's not one top top favorite for victory in this second semi-final, but there are a lot of outsiders that we're looking forward to see. I think uh, countries like Iceland, Switzerland, Bul- uh, 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 Bulgaria, that we are looking forward to see how the public will react to them and if they may be able to challenge those top countries out there which which one would you favor out of those countries those that those that you yes, mentioned yes. uh i think iceland really stands out uh maybe the song is, is not such a top hit potential like last year think about things but still their charisma and their um um they're really authentic mm-hmm. uh, in in what they do on stage, and, and that's really special. That's something we, we've we've never seen on, on Eurovision. They are really special, I think. And even though the song is not like this top 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 hit, uh, maybe it will uh, it will steal people's hearts uh, on on this Thursday night. And that's really interesting how public will will react to that uh this 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 moment will be really crucial yeah what about switzerland a top favorite before the contest now slowly falling down uh, uh the odds can you explain that um the the, the mostly I, I hear comments about his dance moves this this choreography that it's not suiting the song and suiting the artist uh, well uh that that people it's really funny because before the contest, people were saying, "Dot, don't sit and play on the piano. Don't do something that simple. It's what Duncan did. Don't do the, the same." And now, now he did it. It's something completely different, and people are complaining even more. Maybe they they would like to 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 see him and the piano more. So um, that's really funny thing for me, and that's why. Uh, you should have your own idea. I don't listen to to mm-hmm. all the fans and journalists and experts because you have to do your own thing. I think he he does, or at least Sasha Jean Baptiste, who is the director, does this. I like the concept very much. Uh, for me, it's it's a little bit metaphysical, uh, mysterious. Uh, there is something something really drawing my attention in this performance. Um, I like the song very much. His vocals, his uh, his charisma. I I uh, I see the point that maybe maybe he, he feels a little bit uncomfortable in in these dance moves. He said also this during the press conference that he's not a dancer and he was surprised that Sasha wanted him to dance, but then he he was encouraged to 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 do that. Uh, I like it. For me, it's something something. Uh, unusual about it and it's uh, intriguing so something like like, like this uh, but I, I see why people say that it's not uh, a winning contender uh, anymore so Sasha Jean Baptiste came up with an interesting staging concept for uh, Switzerland and when you have a concept like that it's very important that you get every camera shot right we went behind the scenes with Twan van de Twan van de Nieuwenhuizen, head of contests for this year's Eurovision Song Contest, to see how these meetings with the delegations during rehearsals go. Nice first run. Yeah. The, the lighting is much better. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I'm really happy. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. So well, so much better. that's the way I have to yes. go. My name is Twan van de Nieuwenhuizen. I'm a head of contest, and together with my team, we try to create all the uh, plans and ambitions for the 39 delegations. You missed the compliment. 
They oh, really like it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so much better than the lightning. Thank you yeah. very much. You nice to meet you. Well, we did open up uh, in January uh, yeah. just by introducing ourselves to all the delegations because they don't know us and, well, we of course don't know them. And I really believe that when you know each other a bit and talk uh, to each other, it's more easy to understand what you try to, to achieve. And of course, they have to tell us this is a song and this is the, the, the singer or the artist. But also, uh, they should provide us a look and feel briefing where they, well, tell us something more about uh, the act, uh, about the staging. And, uh, well, something more for most of the countries that means a lot more. So, of course, they have very elaborated plans, uh, maybe some visuals, videos, everything. Three, two, one. There are some specific rules. Uh, so, for example, if you create the idea of having your singer flying across Ahoy to, to, the, to the big stage behind us, that's uh, something we don't allow because, uh, well, the roof is uh, already packed with all our technical uh, stuff. So there is no room for extra cables where a guy or a girl can hang and fly. Yeah, and this platform would be with pyro, right? Yeah. Do they know? The I will inform them, yeah. The people on stage. So yeah. Uh, be aware, we're also going to use pyro. Yeah. Just yeah. This is the first pyro. time when everything really comes together. And that's exciting. And also, of course, not everything works. So that's, uh, it's not a plug and play. It's okay, have a look, have a run, do it again. Maybe uh, make some improvements, make, make some adjustments as well. So um, when they hear, it's never done. We Each rehearsal, the acts will grow and get better and better and better. I did stop it. <laughs> there was a stop and uh, actually we don't do that uh, often because uh, also that has to be equal. So 30 minutes, it's sharp on the clock and that's what you get. But uh, the lead singer of, of, uh, of Denmark, uh, he has to cross the bridge, to, to the catwalk, to go to the B stage. But sometimes we uh, push the catwalk back because of uh, there's a camera as well that can make that beautiful low uh, front of stage uh, shots. So he was a bit in a panic. Oh, oh, oh maybe I fall, uh, fall down. And in between uh, the second and the third one, we get Chris, our strong guy who pushes the, 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 the catwalk manually to introduce him. Okay, so Chris is holding an eye on you and uh, you will be safe no matter what happens. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Good luck in the viewing room. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you in a few days. Yeah, yeah. see you private. Ton van der Nieuwenhuis, a head of contest at work behind the scenes with the Danish delegation, Maciej. Interesting look behind the scenes, right? That was uh, really interesting and, and great to, to watch and, and hear the, the conversations between the, the delegation and the, uh, the, the, the crew. Uh, that's really something that uh, you are not able to, to, to witness when you are just a journalist in the press center. So that was really interesting experience for me to watch it. Yeah, I feel very privileged, I have to say, because for 10 years I've been a Eurovision journalist and we always see these rehearsals, we see the product changing from one rehearsal to another, but we don't see how it changes, we don't see what happens in between those run-throughs. And for me to be able to go backstage and to see that for, for once with my own eyes, it was, it was really amazing, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that experience. Um, so now we go to today's rehearsal, uh, which is a dress rehearsal in the afternoon, jury show uh, at night. Very important jury show, I mentioned it already. For whom is that show the most important? Like who needs to get their points tonight to be able to, to have a good result? That's a, that's a good good question. Uh, the, the good thing about this, this dress rehearsals is that for the first time we can see the acts performing one after another oh, yes. so Influence we see running order yeah, yeah. how it it makes this this um, whole whole lineup so it will be interesting to see it for the first time uh like this uh well for, for me this this semi-final is, is more difficult to predict than, than the the first one easy for you to say you had 10 in the first <laughs> you can't go better than that <laughs> it it 
it wasn't easy also but i was lucky really you 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 can try and try and and also it, it's sometimes it's impossible to predict some surprises in eurovision eurovision is unpredictable that's what i say every year um yeah but but um, going back to the second semi-final uh, there are many countries that probably will will fight for the for the spots we also have some some sure qualifiers uh and um yeah, it it might be a crucial moment, like like it was for Romania, in in my opinion, during the first semi final when when the jury show didn't went uh, good. Uh, so so I will watch it with with um, big interest. Yeah, we have well, we mentioned Switzerland already. We have Bulgaria as well. A couple of quite jury friendly entries, and then we also have borderline countries like Serbia and Moldova, who probably are not that jury friendly and exactly. have to be at their best tonight. So um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting show, uh, even more so because today we will for the first time see this American superstar coming to Eurovision, Flo Rida. Yeah, that's a little bit crazy, really. That's uh, one of the smallest countries, if not the smallest right now, yeah? San Marino, uh, yes. Yeah, in the in the in the contest is is bringing uh, big star uh, wor worldwide known. Uh, so this is a really crazy story. Yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy that it's, it's happening. It's for sure. It will draw some attention to Eurovision and to the San Marino in in particular. Uh, so I think San Marino will, will benefit from it. Uh, and the, the song is very good, and then she is she's very good uh, performer, and and we will see how Florida will will do. Uh, for me, I don't know how other people, but for me, uh, I know the name Florida. I know the songs that were made by uh, Florida, and he was involved in it. But I have no idea how does he look like. I've, I, I guess <laughs> I've never s seen him performing live or something like this. I know it's 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 very well known name, and he's a, he's a big star. But um, when if if I was watching the the semi final without knowing that this is Florida, probably I wouldn't recognize him. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm the only one, or there are many people like this who are not sure how does he look like. We will but, find out today. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I think the the the, the commentators will will talk about it, and uh, I wonder if he will be added to the to the. Um, yeah, like the subtitles, yeah, the, the the information that you get before the the. Knowing San Marino, they probably will add it yeah. there. Yes. <laughs> so we got a very interesting day ahead of us. Uh, what are you going to do if people go to if people were to speak Polish and go to Dobro Wieczer Europa Poland? Very well. <laughs> what will they see? Uh, they will see the the live streaming of uh, jury rehearsal live stream of my reactions to, to jury rehearsal actually we will watch it with with great interest because the poland is there and we we will really, really um, keep our fingers crossed that rafa will perform well uh, better than in the in the previous rehearsals so i think that will be main focus for for my viewers um, uh, during wednesday and thursday uh, also and and yeah, I, I'm meeting also uh, the the new commentator from Poland because there there, there was a change after many 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 years. Uh, Artur Orza is not not the commentator anymore, so there is a um, new generation uh, also uh, involved with with uh, Oleg Sikora, who was the host of Junior Eurovision in Gliwice. Uh, so so I will talk to him, make an interview, because I, I I'm really curious how 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 was the experience for him to to comment the Eurovision for the first time on uh, Tuesday and uh, what 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 are his his thoughts on this year's Eurovision? So that's that's what I plan to do. <laughs> well, good luck to you. If Thank you speak you. Polish, do go to Dobrowiecze Europa Poland. Uh, <laughs> if you do not speak Polish, you can of course go to ESC Daily for live coverage of the afternoon show, where we will look at the interval acts and all the uh, and the presenters and the postcards, or to of course our jury blog in which we will go in depth into the competition and look through the eyes of the juror to all these performances. For tonight, thank you for watching this episode of Rotterdam Insight and have a good evening.